Welcome to the Rise of a Kingdom podcast. I'm your Dungeon Master, Evan. This podcast is using the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, and we are also using most Unearthed Arcana and extra content to the 5th edition, which includes some homebrew content. This episode is going to be a brief world-building episode elaborating on the world that the Rise of a Kingdom campaign is going to be taking place in. So this world is homebrew. It's created by myself, taking inspiration from a lot of my favorite fantasy games, books, movies, and even TV shows. Um, the world is called Mundus. It's both a new and yet kind of old world. The history of this world is kind of lost. There hasn't been really a whole lot of, you know, attention taking to kind of um, keeping track of history from, from, you know, the elder races that have, you know, long lived races like elves or, or, or dwarves for that example. So there's, there's little known about what was here before them. The world is mostly uncharted and full of mysteries, uh, all except for the Edeon Peninsula where the Rise of the Kingdom um, campaign is going to be starting. So this peninsula is populated in majority by elves and dwarves. Uh, gnomes and halflings have lived among like the, the mountain dwarves in their fortress city of Dweromir. Um, and, you know, just along the other hill dwarves, you know, other races in their respected cities and villages across this peninsula. So the elves mainly keep to their ancient forest of Illabeth. The the High King and Council rule over the drow high elves and, and wood elves respectively. So dragonborn, orcs, and goliaths all live among tribes in various parts across this peninsula as well, but they're they're mainly kind of uh in the area to the south and to the, the north. So there's a there's a desert to the south and there's also this kind of steppes area towards the, the north of the peninsula. And uh, humans are new to this peninsula. They've only been around for about half a century. They came by sea from the west, having been forced to escape their homelands due to some sort of catastrophe. That'll be elaborated on and kind of discovered as the campaign goes on. Some of our players are aware of this, but just for the sake of not trying to metagame to those players that aren't aware of this, because they're definitely going to be listening to this, is just kind of what my way of doing this um, as a DM. I like to kind of keep everyone on the same page, especially you guys, the, the listeners. Um, so yeah, like I said, they, they live on the western uh, coast as they came by the sea. And they're kind of in the middle of completing their own kind of little port capital and villages and cities on, on the western coast. Um, another race that, that's kind of common is, is goblins and hobgoblins. Hobgoblins a little less common. Um, they hail from their swampy island of Gobland, which can be found to the south. Um, the goblins are pretty much found anywhere across this peninsula where there's an opportunity for money you know, some sort of power or something shiny of some sort or even just, you know, something sharp and, and shiny, like a, a fancy golden sword or something, golden daggers. So there's, there's also many, many other races found, um, you know, across this peninsula if you were to travel, although they are a lot rarer than, than the other previous ones I've mentioned. So, so some of these some some of these races are you know fairly rare, but there's also races included in like the player's handbook or some of the Antarctic Arcana stuff that have never stepped foot on the peninsula. So if if you were to encounter one, it would be kind of a a new experience. You wouldn't really know what to think as a as a as a citizen of this peninsula, and the world is pretty vast. Um, so you never know what what the adventurers are gonna encounter. Uh, for a visual representation of kind of the, the areas I've described, you can visit our website, hardlynerding.com slash rise of a kingdom. And on there, you'll see a, a local region map. And you can click on that, and that'll bring up the map. So you can kind of visualize along with me uh, what I've just described. So uh, getting into more of the, the faith of this world, the deities and gods of this world are homebrewed by myself. Um... And they're mostly unknown to everyone that lives in the peninsula. The only kind of exceptions to that is the tribal people of the plains kind of worship the elements in the circle of life, you know, nature stuff. But they're not not all that aware of any kind of named gods. And then the elves are the only other exception as they're an elder race. So um, elves are long-lived, and some of the longest-lived elves remember you know the Feywilds where they came from originally 
and they worship the goddess of dreams of the Feywilds, Sangelica. And, you know, just a lot of, yeah, like I said before, a lot of the other races um, don't worship the gods or they're just not aware of them. Most people are just caught up in the day-to-day of surviving and, you know, they kind of only look to guidance towards kings, mayors, and lords, you know, nobility, and kind of look to them for for guidance in, in their day-to-day and, and if they have any issues. So that they don't really see the the need. I wouldn't say they don't see the need, but they're just not aware and haven't really had the thought process of thinking of gods or, or anything like that. Thinking of religion. But uh, some people throughout this world have been approached by these unknown gods to do their will in secret. So you never know who may actually be aware of these gods or doing their will. So to get more towards the story, the story is going to be kicking off in the center of the peninsula in this area called the Valley of Wild Magics. And uh, something peculiar is occurring there. So all our adventurers are going to be kind of drawn to this peculiarity, this this strange thing that's happening. And, uh, well, you'll have to kind of stay tuned and and listen to our first episode for the rest of the adventure and finding out what this peculiar thing is that's causing all these adventurers to be drawn to it. So we're expecting the podcast to begin this fall. If you're looking for updates or anything like that, you can follow us on Twitter uh, with the the handle of at HardlyNerding or check out our website, like I said before, HardlyNerding.com for updates. And all all our podcasts will be posted on there for sure, um, along with another couple other websites like iTunes and YouTube. So for sure, if, if, if we've definitely caught your attention with this, stay tuned and check out the rest of our episodes. Thanks for listening.